Oh, good day there. <laughs> it's Baron. Baron Dodger and Crystal the Husky. And we're amazing. You should see us. Oh. And you say, I love you! I love you! <laughs> yes, I love you too. And this is. <laughs> this is our fabulous palace that we can't afford. Another one? Oh, you do? Okay. I'll play pick him up, Fred. Pick him up. <laughs> okay, I've just got a little um, speech to do because um, he says, My name is Baron Dodger, and that's Crystal the Husky. She's absolutely amazing because dogs spelled backwards is God. And really, she's all I've got left, apart from my sentience. I just wanted to highlight um, her letter um, that I've written to um, Victoria Legal Aid. Um, it's obliged by the government um, to provide legal aid for persons with a disability and it's also obliged um, to them to um, have um, access to justice and I, I finish off the letter by saying um, it's my perspective that as one of the most hated men in Australia the ones left standing in my life are only obligated to support me because of politicized reasons of their own or actually sent by authorities informed by the people orchestrating the conspiracy in order to create maximum harm for me or entrap me in poverty with much less than I deserve. Currently, I can't pay rent and I'm the guest of an NDIS provider. Otherwise, I'm utterly homeless with no legal rights, no human rights. I struggle on my own, addicted and neglected without care. Now that you know that you are unable to oppose this conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, because it's so huge that it would adversely affect your own prosperity, reputation or finances, how do you plead for refusing to help me? And this was sent to um, a guy called Graham Wells. Hi Graham, of um, Victoria Legal Aid. And this is the letter that I sent him. Dear Graham, I have the following issues, and there's listed in how many points? There's um, there's uh, 35. One, refusal to report human rights abuses. My pleas to report documented human rights abuses have fallen on deaf ears, leaving my cries for justice unanswered. Number two, protection of Steve Isonides. I feel abandoned as authorities protect Steve Isonides, my former fiance, leaving me vulnerable to his actions and influence, and he's now threatened to kill me and my dog. Number three, forced homelessness. The cruelty of forced homelessness has stripped away the comfort and security of a stable life. Number four, prolonged expo exposure to family violence. Every day I endure in poverty is another day I endure the torment of a prolonged exposure, prolonged exposure, to family violence, a never ending nightmare. Number five, refusal to report police corruption. Despite witnessing corruption within the police force, my attempts to expose it have been met with blocking me and resistance. Number six, blacklisting and ministerial assistance. A blacklisting scheme prevents me from reaching out to a minister for much needed assistance, compounding my isolation said by not mentioning people I'm not allowed to in a court order. Number seven, unfair financial rulings. Unjust and illegal financial rulings have cast me into a cycle of poverty with no access to the law or equality. I'm banned at AFCA. Um, number eight, rejection of public interest disclosures. My eligible public interest disclosures have been coldly rejected, stifling my attempts to bring crucial matters to light. Number nine, lack of support for essential services. The absence of support in accessing vital services like psychologists, psychiatrists, financial counsellors, drug and alcohol counsellors leaves me grappling with these challenges alone. Number 10, ignoring cognitive brain impairment. The cognitive brain impairment resulting from my suicide attempt is blatantly ignored, especially when the hospital owed me a duty of care and it's not listed on my NDIS um, disabilities. Um, what to? Um, um, yeah, ign oh, condoning violent attacks. 
The condoning of violent attacks within a hospital by a contracted government thug sent to intimidate me is setting um, is an unforgivable betrayal of trust that the hospital and police were in on. Number 12, untreated ADHD leading to addictions. The neglect of my ADHD diagnosis left untreated has paved the way for the development of destructive addictions. Having ADHD and not being having your medicine is like having cancer and being refused chemotherapy. Just because it's invisible doesn't mean it shouldn't be treated. Number 13, advocacy for ineffective solutions. Advocacy for ineffective solutions, like sending me to places where no meaningful help is provided, further deepens my despair. 14, suffering as a survivor. As a survivor of child sexual abuse, I carry the heavy burden of past traumas that continue to haunt my present. 15, drugging and sexual assault. The horrors of being drugged and sexually assaulted have scarred me, leaving me emotionally and physically damaged. 16, under investigation at home. Being under constant investigation by government authorities who I have, have filmed outside of my home is an invasion of my privacy and an additional layer of distress. 17, chased out of town by police. The absurdity of being chased out of police catchment areas and out of my home into the, into the world despite having a clean criminal record and a disability adds to my sense of injustice. Denied owed settlements. The denied owed settlements, particularly from Isonides of $500,000, further perpetuates the injustice that I endure. 19. Non-payment of work cover cases. The non-payment of not only one, but two work cover cases leaves me financially crippled and without the support I deserve. Um, they rejected it on account of I'm not a worker, but I've got a federal court document satisfied that I was employed by DSS. But when is a fact a fact when you get the money? 20. Malicious destruction of business. The malicious destruction of my business website robbed me of my livelihood and any sense of stability and at once droid destroyed my electronic signature. 21. Being banned from Africa. Being banned from seeking resolution at AFCA restricts my avenues for financial complaint resolution. 22. Refusal by Australian Human Rights Commission to investigate. The refusal by Australian Human Rights Commission to investigate my documented human rights abuses is a betrayal of the very institution meant to protect individuals like me. They also free kicked a case to the opposition and lost me a million dollar settlement um, which wasn't the, the person's, the, set of the, the opposition's thing at all. It was actually the Australian Human Rights Commission putting an end to it, which describes how the federal government is my nemesis because once they were out of the way, I did get a settlement from those people a long while ago. 23. Differential treatment. The stark differential treatment I receive compared to others is a constant reminder of the systemic biases working against me. 24 unacknowledged altruistic, altruistic contributions. My altruistic co contributions to society over 30 years, given in the service of others, remains unacknowledged and leaving me feeling unappreciated. 25. Enduring V2K audio harassment. Daily endurance of V2K audio harassment and audio sound blasting is a relentless form of psychological torture, a haunting reminder of the cruelty that I face. 26. Refusal from Prime Minister's Office. The Prime Minister's Office callously refuses to acknowledge my predicament, ignoring the desperate need for a meaningful response. 27. Deceitful handing of FOI requests by the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet. The Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet's deceitful handing, handling of my Freedom of Information quest, initially citing it from the OAIC as voluminous and complex, only later to claim no documents exist, further erodes the tr my trust in the system. 28. Now we're finished. Lack of legitimate response from the National Anti-Corruption Commission. The National Anti-Corruption Commission's failure to provide a legitimate response to my corruption complaint underscores the lack of accountability 
from within the system. 29. Refusal, refusal of assistance from Orange Door. The refusal of assistance from Orange Door, an organisation meant to address family violence, leaves me without a crucial support system. 30. Refusal of assistance from recognised organisations. Vimiac, Mental Health Legal Centre, Mental Health Community Centre, SANE Australia, Beyond Blue, Victoria University and many other recognised organisations are fully aware of my political stitch up and situation and have coldly refused assistance, leaving me to navigate the storm alone. 31. Systemic and political attack on finances. Systemic and political attacks on my finances have left me economically crippled, with financial stability continually undermined by calculated and politically motivated actions. 32. Failure of two work cover cases with absurd reasons. The failure of not one but two work cover cases adds to the absurdity of my plight, with reasons cited such as claiming I was not an employee for the purposes of the SRC Act. This despite, despite possessing a federal court document explicitly stating my employment with DSS, leaving me in a Kafkaesque struggle for the compensation I rightly deserve. 33. Persecution spanning years since my autobiography publication. The relentless persecution I face after my autobiography, Recovered Not Cured, A Journey Through Schizophrenia, was published by Alan and Unwin, I face has spanned many years, ever since the publication of it, which chronicles my recovery from the diagnosis of schizophrenia. The act of sharing my journey, meant to inspire hope, has become the catalyst for years of targeted persecution, adding an extra layer of cruelty to my ongoing struggles, and after being psychometrically profiled, um, my vulnerabilities have now been weaponized against me, which is a cruel and abhorrent way to treat a person who's already known to be suffering. 34. Vilification by the Herald Sun and the age leading to un unlawful intervention. I faced vilification by the Herald Sun and public humiliation, a workplace I was once a part of. This unjust article portrayed led to my unlawful termination from the age. It was called My Descent Into Madness, How Schizophrenia Stole Richard McLean's Mind. Um, and I was quite happily working at the age of that time. Um, it leaves me without a fair, equitable, just or legal settlement to rectify the damages caused by this wrongful dismission. Um, 35, this is the last one, okay? The betrayal after three decades of altruism. Three decades of advocating for others in altruism, caring for marginalized people, have resulted in an astonishing betrayal. Dozens of organizations and institutions, along with hundreds of individuals and my colleagues, have forsaken my quest for justice, revealing a profound and heartbreaking betrayal after a lifelong of selfless dedication. So that is an email to um, um, Graham Wells of, um, of Legal Aid. And since that letter was published, I have been left vulnerable and unprotected because my public interest disclosures have been rejected. Now, as a person who is obligated um, to call out corruption, for the sake of humanity and democracy, regardless of who's in power, um, it has always been something which I've felt I have to do. And um, for speaking the truth, I've been absolutely crucified, and now I'm a targeted individual of the Australian government earmarked for destruction. But scenes I um, have now been um, uh, um, left vulnerable and open to attack, by um, by um, by the government, by the government of the government, um, the police have now arrested me, and I'm not allowed to say what for, but it's fairly innocuous, and um, I have been detained, interviewed, arrested, and charged. I've had to face court once, and um, and some things happened there, and now I await sentencing. Um, um, at court for this indictable charge, which is actually pretty serious. If you knew me, and they do know me, they know it would be ridiculously inert. Um, but anyway, um, I'm in a difficult situation of 
facing criminal charges. I've been charged with criminal charges, but I'm facing jail. So since this email was um, written to Graham Wells, he's refused to reply to me. And that exonifies and symbolizes the very system um, that's designed to help me is the very system which the front line is abusing, neglecting, and pointedly rejecting me. So I saved off the letter um, with, um, it's my perspective that as one of the most hated men in Australia, the ones left standing, i.e. Graham Wells from the Legal Aid, are only obligated to support me because of politicised reasons of their own or are actually sent by authorities informed by the people orchestrating the conspiracy in order to create maximum harm for me or entrap me in the poverty with much less than I deserve. Currently, I can't pay rent and I'm the guest of an NDIS provider, otherwise I'm utterly homeless. That's in breach of the Australian Human Rights Charter, ratified um, in Australia in 2008 by the UN of Disabled People, which states that a disabled person must be afforded reasonable accommodation. It also states that um, the government should provide a disabled person um, the avenues um, to justice. Unfortunately for me, it's extremely difficult to get the government or anyone in the government to do anything for you because I'm systemically profiled. I've suffered literally a murder, <laughs> murdered, persecuted to death, and then spent three years being utterly forsaken, squatting or homeless. And um, now um, as a rejected whistleblower, I've um, been arrested. Everyone, if no one's worried, life's going on and I'm tied to the tracks and um, the train's coming along. And when it hits me, I'm going to be imprisoned in a prison. And um, no one's worried. Why? Because, you know, I've been character assassinated. So yeah, it's a difficult situation. And I ended up the letter by saying to Graham Wells, now that you know that you are unable to oppose this conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, because it's so huge, it would adversely affect your own prosperity, reputation or finances. How do you plead for refusing to help me? Graham Wells, I'm still waiting for your response. If anyone can help me, I'd appreciate it. I'm still a human being. I have sentience. I'm actually not a bad guy. If you would like to go to www.barrendodger.com.au, you'll be able to see all of the evidence of this profound, unjust and inhumane treatment of me. And if you can help, please do. But if you can't, please just don't hurt me anymore. Thanks for listening.